hello and nice recording here in English we're gonna test fly the uh, Transall C160 from Azure Poly and we're gonna do the Mach loop in it uh, the C160 is a uh, basically heavy military transport it has been uh, retired already it's being replaced by the new Airbus A400M um, it's comparable to the Hercules, the, the well-known C-130. Um, heavy transport, big turboprop engines, and uh, should be a lot of fun. Just doing a short hop across the Mach loop. If you don't know that the Mackendiff Mach loop, is the, the long name, uh, the Mach loop is basically a low-flying area in Wales, in the UK, for training military crews to fly to do low flying. So it's basically through a valley roughly following the road it's a one-way track so to speak and we'll be flying it in for from uh, Landwehr Airport uh, Echo Golf Fox Delta okay here we go load her up oh, I forgot my throttle quadrant let's mount that here While we wait, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the C160 because I really love, really dig the plane. Oh, the weather is good. Nope, the weather this sucks. This is too small for your aircraft. <laughs> I, never, I never even noticed that, of course, the weather could be sucky. Um, let me fix that because this is more for a uh, fuel clouds situation like okay here we go the Azure Poly C160 Transall stands for Transport Alliance I think it was a joint venture aircraft to make really cool aircraft where you can do lots of funny stuff also on the outside G the GPU, APU stuff, wheel chocks and covers um, what you can also do is loader up with all kinds of big well, cargo stuff. You can open the gear department compartment. You can open the APU compartment, and you can see it, it because it's located in the gear compartment. And you can lower the fuselage, so you lower it, so you can do the unloading better, which is really cool compared with the RAM. It's just visuals, but it's a nice thing to do. Some other visuals. I'll turn on propeller dust, and what I'll also do is. Take just a hint of fuel. We don't need a whole lot. I'll just take tag A. There's quite an intricate system in fuel overhauling, transferring, so let's not cut into that at this moment. Take off the covers, take off the wheel chocks. Okay, and go with the EFB. First, we go upstairs, all the way up, and we enter the batteries. Now, as soon as we do that, we get an alarm. We turn that off. We put some illumination on the instruments. Same on the other side. Oh. And while we're here, we're going to initiate the IRS's and turn on the FMS's. FMS's are not that big yet in functionality but it is getting there. There's a, uh, an update coming that will put this F FMS in uh, full automation range. Okay, while this is all going we need APU. You can just hook up the GPU with APU is more fun. So I'm opening the inlet, I'll open the starter and the lead air is now on for off. I always forget that. Yeah, it was already on. Okay. You can here spool it up. And you can see the red hydraulic coming up because those are the hydraulic system, the red system is being fed by the APU. When it's running, we're gonna link the APU to the buses.
and now we have full power to the aircraft. Roger that. Next up, let's just start the engines. Engines. I'm doing it by heart. Um, of course, you can follow the whole checklist thing, but power off. First, I'm gonna put these in the correct idle lever position. Select main starter. Um, we only have fuel in the A tanks, so I'm gonna open the A fuel pumps on both sides. You can see the pressure coming up. And first, I'm gonna start engine two. See it turning up, slowly spooling up. When it gets to 2000 RPM, then we enter some fuel in the system. Here it's spooling, and see it's spooling up. And now we're gonna put in some fuel. Big, powerful turboprop. Rolls-Royce Steins. What I love about these Rolls-Royce engines always have a distinct whine. In the day engines, the Fokker 70, Fokker 100, Fokker 50s. And also, when I was working at Schiphol Airport, I could immediately distinguish them. They're now all gone, they're now all embers. But when they were there, I could easily distinctly hear it here. A Rolls Royce starting up. Okay, this is done. Okay, close this. Open this one. It's a bit finicky on the click spots, but it'll do. You see that the green system hydraulics is up. Some fuel here too. There we go. There she is. Spooling up nicely. She's there. Start her off. And main ignition starts her off. Everything's running. Power from the generators. Three, four. That means APU power can come off. APU power shutting off. Eating stuff. stuff already push back to worry about winds and stuff with the nice weather setting flaps 2 which already has a bit of frost from the idling engines which I remember I have to take off from the idle setting now Thanks 
начинать шум. What's also fun about this aircraft is that it can do very steep um, short take of land short landing approaches. I can show you why. amount of drag. It's like dropping an anchor. These things are great for slowing down or doing very steep approaches. Get fuel to full flight. gonna do we're gonna fly around this heading towards the river to Barmouth then enter the river at Barmouth and then fall follow, follow to the town Dolgalau and there we will enter the loop and we will follow it anti-clockwise I hope I can remember to fly the good the correct route um, I know that we have to turn before Lake Lynn Wingill something like that and then follow the road basically south towards Maglinev, if I pronounce it correctly. When then we follow the road basically clockwise around until we come back at Dogolau where we go back to land at this airport. That's the plan. Then it lights on. Taxi lights off. Here we go. power of these engines is still a bit moot on the sound I think it's coarser but still we don't have cargo aboard so gear up and flaps off I'm gonna fly this like a fighter as the speed is brought up I'll pull this back to, let's say, 4500 GSI. Throttles. Fully manual. Trimmer out. You could also open the ramp. I think there's a limitation on 160 knots for ramp opening, so I don't know if that will give me structural issues. I'll do that when we get back. Let's throw the, uh, the innards of this big bulk. Because it is a big ship. So we don't get to the overspeeding. I'm also taking the labels out. Oh. Uh oh. I pressed take the label out button and now I'm freezing. Why am I freezing? cargo plane with some surprising agility up its sleeve. Let's 
she I low I dare to go. Something about the heaviness of this plane in this route gives you some kind of a yee feeling. Yee-haw! There's a small GPS unit here, you can optionally turn it off, but if you have it on, it's very nicely put away. So you still have modern world reference. not and it's still cool. <laughs> there it is. That should be it. Oh, that's a really nasty turn. Over there, but I think this is correct. No, I made a boo boo. Okay, rolling out right. Getting some altitude, getting a tight right hander. See what happened here. I got confused and I chose the wrong one. in the world where photographers or viewers in general can watch flying aircraft from above. There's some parking lots and roads here on the tops of these, these valleys. There's the lake. Before that lake with the turners sharp to the left. like this. And it is fast with those big turbo props and of course the bucket little loads we're hauling against the 240 knots. Valley, follow the water on the road. No, well, this turn I can't make, so now I have to oil a bit, take a bit of the power off, going too fast. 
air brakes out. Too high on maneuvering speed. Left, let's do a hard left. Just not sure if it's in front or behind of that hill. Let's go this way. This is a road, let's follow the road. Shade over the ground. Five hundred feet on the altimeter. Exactly high. She handled beautifully. It's heavy. Oh, it's it's such a heavy, heavy aircraft. It really conveys to you over the controls. It also conveys some kind of a nimble military pedigree to Archer. Checking the GPS again. Yeah, this is good. Scared the bejesus out of the people on the roads here. Back on the brakes a bit. Right now we only have a smidge of fuel with us, no cargo in the hold, so she built up speed tremendously. Hello. Go towards the northern end again. Take the first one, if it's not a dead end. I think that's correct anyway. It is a dead end. <laughs> no, it is correct, apparently. And also not a dead end. Definitely visit this once sometime. Of course, they do this with all kinds of military aircraft, most of them jets, of course. And not only UK, uh, also NATO, US, France, Germany. Okay, I think I hear here, I have to exit a bit. Valley. It's still following the road, so. Yeah, you're coming 
out of it and coming back to the town where we all began so basically what you can do now is follow the road and go left again turn in the mock loop again or exit here yeah that's our left that's the entrance and we go back to Barmouth and then land so take a bit of altitude now Cargo Bay, Big Bay, we'll show that later. this thing like a Cessna. Normal pattern altitudes would be around 700 to 1000 feet. I'll add a bit more. trick that's nice from the uh, power system fire flares okay I'm not doing these right <laughs> now it's on system. Cool in it. Just a bit of fun. Okay. Powering back a bit. There's the airport on the tip. the brakes brakes done right. over here and the flaps one much here's inside the hole Sponsons or cartoons or whatever you call them. Flaps two. Basically, you go flaps three in the green arc or below 160, something like that. Yeah. There's the airfield. Gonna take one five again. As you slow down, you start hearing rattling stuff. Some nice sounds in the sound immersion.
exactly doing a nice joining of downwind, basically flying alongside into the circuit. So normal life tip would not be cool. But here we are. Flying downwind, left hand. is 45 degrees behind us like I said we land this like a Cessna then we start our base leg flaps four Flaps turn in towards one fiver five. We are full flaps open the air brakes. Ooh, wind, that's not going to be pretty. Stall, stall warning. Here we are. Reverse. up well we can taxi back but it doesn't matter I'll just take a parking somewhere landing lights off taxi lights on strokes light off Off for ground operations. I don't think there's an exit here. Okay, never mind. Oh, there is. It's a bit small, but for this type of aircraft. Anyway, it's capable of rough terrain landing, so you don't really need an airport. Just a strip will do. All in all, I really like this aircraft, and the fun thing is that it's still being updated. Like I said, there's a HUD coming, there's an FMS coming, more so that you can basically fly uh, procedural. It's weird stutters on now and then. Oh, building, moron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, amateur. Today on Amateur's Night. Nice thing, prop dust. It's a feature you can turn on or off. Parking brake set. If you turn it on when you go from a 
most of the tarmac, then you see dust behind the propellers. Okay, I'll take up the AFB. And for now we're gonna connect GPU. If it lets me. Yeah, it is. Now I can enter power to the GPU, which is the other way around. Turn off power from generators. And turn off the engines. What I also do is go to load, open the gear compartment. Oh, alarms. Whoa! Go away with your alarm. Gear compartment is open. What you see now is that the compartments are open. Take off the lights. And inside we have also the APU. This is fun. This is cool stuff. Another stuff that you can open is of course by the door, back doors. And I will also do is fuselage lowering. If it reacts, it doesn't react. Why doesn't this react? Because you silly salt, you need hydraulic pressure for that, which you don't have. Starting APU. Amateur. down why don't I hear a view coming on There's it going. Now it's going. And now you can already see it powering up. And you see the fuselage going down. So it's squatting on its hind legs, so to speak. Of course, you got the pilot door over there. The side doors are open. Now it's basically squatting down. Now, of course, I can take the ramp. Is that correct? No. Now it's opening. You see the lights. Big cavernous ramp and hold. Now, of course, um, we could pull up some seats. Put in a water tank, vehicles. Then, of course, the seats go away. Barrels, boxes, pallets. Yeah, so if I do one of the vehicles, then the seats go away. So in this case... Nice. And from the inside... We have this. Now, if I want to go military... I have one, the VAB, or two, v two VBLs. There we are. Of 
or one VAV. Of course, you can still combine that. There's some combinations possible, but not all. Now, as soon as we do boxes, then the VB goes away. If we go tank, VAB goes away. So, two pallets and basically an armored vehicle. Yeah, cool. Load it up. Really cool. Now if I'm all done with that, let's say I'm not taking anything military. I'm taking this, this, this. Yeah, see, if I do that, then the military vehicles disappear. If I take the barrels, one goes out, boxes, then pallets, and two goes out. So now it's all normal cargo and seating. And then what you would do is, now well we're done, then we can say we erase, and you erase the fuselage. You can only erase from the cockpit. Normally the lowering will be done by the loadmaster in the back. But the raising is in the cockpit. And I see it slowly coming up. Yeah, now it's done. And then you can basically say, okay, we're done loading. And it closes up the big clamshell, upper and lower doors, closing in on each other. Really cool. This was a quick demo of the C-160. Through the Machloop. Loads of fun, actually. Shutting it down. And out. Thank you for watching. See you later.